The Catalan president will ask Spain's leader for a referendum in their upcoming meeting. He will seek Madrid's support for an agreed vote on independence. Hello and welcome to Catalan News. Artur Mas and Carlos Puigdemont, the two predecessors of Kim Torra, failed to convince Madrid to agree on a referendum on independence. But this won't make the current Catalan president back down. He will lay the issue on the negotiating table with Pedro Sánchez on July the 9th. Torra announced this from Washington in his first major official visit as president. In a minute, we'll tell you how it's unfolding. In today's show, we also take a look at how the Mediterranean games are going as they reach the halfway point. So far, it hasn't gone quite as planned. Six new Catalan government delegations abroad were green-lighted yesterday with plans to open more in the pipeline. Most of them will be in Europe, but the executive is looking also further afield. Evidence of this is Kim Torres' trip to the other side of the pond this week. From Washington DC, he has said that he hopes Catalonia will soon join the free nations of the world. Catalan President Kim Torra has landed in Washington on his first major foreign trip since taking office. And at one of the events he took part in, he revealed that he will ask the Spanish president for a referendum on self-determination in their meeting set for July the 9th, something Madrid has flatly rejected in the past few years. Que si uh, uh, somos capaces de abrir ese diálogo, si vamos a ese referéndum uh, vinculante y efectivo, pues puede pasar de todo. Y esa es la opción con la que nosotros vamos a ir el, en, la, en la reunión del señor Pedro Sánchez. Torra also explained one of the aims of his U.S. trip. Among his aims is to look for goodwill towards the progress made by the movement in favor of a Catalan state, which culminated in a declaration of independence in October. Torra made this objective clear while speaking at his first public event in the U.S. capital. In Catalonia, the concepts of republic, freedom and democracy have ceased to be complementary concepts but to be synonymous. And we will not stop working until all three concepts will be all internationally recognized reality. Torra took part in the inauguration of the Catalonia America Council a private organization aiming to foster bilateral relationships between both territories. During his speech, Torra criticized the measures implemented by Spain after the events in October. Earlier in the day, Pedro Sánchez referred to Catalonia, making it clear that his new government has nothing to do with the previous one. Sánchez's rise to power in Spain coincided with the lifting of direct rule in Catalonia, something that the leader of the opposition in the Catalan parliament, Inés Arrimadas, thinks was wrong. Arrimadas argues for the suspension of self-rule in Catalonia to continue because, she says, the new executive is violating the rights of citizens. Torres visit to Washington is not only for political reasons, but also to support Catalan culture abroad. The Smithsonian Folklife Festival is kicking off today with Catalonia as one of its guests of honour. Traditional music will feature, as some artists showed in the reception with visiting Catalan officials. But that's not all. There will also be human towers and performances with fire by giants and devils, along with various parades. The Catalan culture minister thinks it's a great opportunity for the sector. La cultura tradicional catalana és molt rica, és molt diversa i es projecta en molts fronts. Jo crec que avui aquí podran veure un tas del boi millor. Back this side of the Atlantic, today we receive some relevant news about the pro-independence judicial case. 25 officials involved will face trial, expected to take place this autumn. Their appeals for their indictments were rejected today. That means they are to be officially prosecuted. 13 of them will be judged for rebellion, a crime which can carry 30 years in jail. That is most of the former Catalan government, the former Catalan parliament speaker and other politicians and activists, some of whom are in pre-trial prison for eight months now. All of the Puigdemont cabinet will also face misuse of funds charges, which means up to 15 years behind bars. The deposed ministers not facing rebellion and other officials with lesser responsibilities will also face the charge of disobedience, not punishable by prison. Today's decision by the Supreme Court is especially relevant because from now on those imprisoned and prosecuted for rebellion, including the former Vice President, Oriol Junqueras, can be suspended as MPs under Spanish law. 
Carlos Puigdemont and Tony Comín, both seeking refuge abroad, might also be barred from their seats in Parliament. Moving on to business now, and today analysts have made a forecast regarding economic growth in Catalonia this year. The Catalan Economists Association believes that the economy will grow at around 3% in 2018, continuing trends seen in previous terms. This comes on the same day it was announced that more international companies will be investing in the country. 20 million euros is the amount of money planned to be invested by the multinational American Axle and Manufacturing in a new plant to be built near Barcelona. It's expected to be up and running by January next year. Meanwhile, the Belgian real estate firm Equilis also revealed new plans for projects just outside the Catalan capital. If confirmed, they estimate to invest 200 million euros in the construction of two shopping centres. Equilis is already building one shopping centre in Esplugas de Llobregat, which it plans to open this November. Another big project over the past few years has been in Tarragona, undertaken by different administrations. It's the Mediterranean Games and we're already halfway through, but success of this sporting event is in question for several different reasons. Every major sports event gets its fair share of controversy, but that might well be an understatement when it comes to the 18th edition of the Mediterranean Games, taking place in Tarragona. Problems started early on. Taking place every four years, just like the Olympics, the Games were to be held in 2017, but they were postponed. The reason? Budget uncertainty caused by the political deadlock over the formation of a new government in Spain. As the Games were officially due to start on Friday last week, preparations were still underway up until the last minute. But the opening ceremony did not put an end to the controversies. It galvanized them. Catalan President Kim Torra was booed and some government officials accused the City Council of Tarragona of favoring unionist organizations when distributing the tickets, accusations that the mayor adamantly rejected. The inauguration also left an unlikely image, half-empty stands, a vision that became the norm throughout the Games, and if anything, got worse. 150,000 visitors were expected, but the image of the deserted buildings and esplanades bothered even the most enthusiastic ones. Well, there only are volunteers um, and the sportsmen. Um, we are alone. For example, you can see there, there's no one here walking. So, for me, it's, it's a disaster. The travels did not stop there. After authorities took too long to turn up at a medal ceremony for swimmers, Catalan Olympic champion Mireia Belmonte decided to hand out the medals herself. Another medal ceremony saw France's badminton team singing La Marseillaise a cappella, after the music of the anthem wasn't played. With five days left, the problems are not over. Today, the basketball tournament was postponed after the court was damaged, and it will not continue until tomorrow. The world of video games is constantly evolving. Long gone are the days when Tetris or Pong seem to be the pinnacle of gaming technology. And what better way to discover the latest innovations in the industry than by heading down to the Game Lab Video Games Fair, which kicked off today in Barcelona. Game Lab 2018 is underway. Video games fans have already filled the fair, testing their metal on LCD screens, trying out anything from classic style adventure games to platform games with a modern twist and everything in between. For two days, the Catalan capital becomes a hub for all things gaming, bringing together some of the most influential names in the industry. And at this year's edition, there has been a noticeable difference. Tenemos un Game Lab femenino, o sea, tenemos las grandes figuras internacionales de la creación eh, femeninas del mundo del videojuego. One of these creators is Amy Hennig, the mastermind behind Uncharted. In fact, at this Game Lab, 40% of the speakers taking part are women, making it the edition with the biggest female presence to date. For one games developer, this is hopefully no coincidence. Por suerte, cada vez hay más mujeres desarrollando, más mujeres publicando, más mujeres en prensa, más mujeres en, en, en todo el sector en sí. Platonic Games create simple games for mobile, such as their latest release being showcased at the event, Sailor Cats. It's designed based on the aesthetic of being cute, according to Castro. 
Other big names to watch out for at Games Lab 2018 include Sean Layden, head of software development at PlayStation, Daryl Hall, vice president of EA Studios, and Todd Howard, the designer behind modern narrative classics such as Fallout and Skyrim. Still talking about technology, let's take a look at a technology that allows us to travel 2,000 years into the past. Virtual reality glasses are being used in Empurias, the place where ancient Romans started to expand their culture in what is now Catalonia, around 200 years BC. Now some ruins are still standing, but with these glasses, the grandeur of the past can be seen again. To finish our show, we leave you with images of this site today. Thanks for watching and see you tomorrow.